This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Take a minute to check your social battery. How's it doing? It's easy to ignore our needs and spread ourselves too thin sometimes. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. Learn more at betterhelp.com super. That's betterhelp.com super. Hey brother. Guys, it is time for another Google autofill. And today is a special one because today we are asking, why does Voldemort Google autofill? Which if you are a very very long time viewer. You may recall, I've actually done this one before in 2015. Today, it's why does Voldemort Google autofill? Wow, look at me go. That was pre full-time Super Carlin Brothers, pre marriage. Like I had a whole different job at that time. A lot has changed since then. We have a much nicer intro. We're not using the onboard camera microphone, which I actually have the original little SCB camera. This is where it all started. Like, I wonder if it still works. <laughs> oh my God, it does. Does it like look and sound like 2015? I'm doing the thing where I look over here and I need to look here. I always made that mistake. I was really hoping the camera might explain why my hair looks so bad back then, but maybe, maybe I was just off my shampoo routine. But also since then, maybe, maybe people have Googled like, you know, new things about the Dark Lord. So today let's bring why does Voldemort Google autofill into the present? <laughs> If you're not familiar with the Google autofill game, it is super easy. We just go to Google, type in why does Voldemort and then each letter of the alphabet and Google fills in the rest of the question, which I then answer with 100% ish accuracy. Occasionally Google will throw in an extra word or modifier at the beginning, but that's okay. We just roll with it. A, why does Voldemort always steal my shampoo? <laughs> Oh, I remember this one. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe nobody Googles anything new ever. Oh, I bet he has invisible hair. Oh, I bet it's amazing. I still don't know why people are Googling this. And if you try and Google why people are Googling it, you just get results for people asking, why is this an autofill result? Is this some like secret Google code? What is going on? Or probably more realistically, it's just still a problem. Maybe Voldemort is still out there robbing you you all of your hair cleanser. Heck, maybe that's what was happening to me back in 2015. Voldemort was stealing my shampoo. <sighs> Although I have to say, clearly I got the better of him. I feel like I'm actually having a marvelous hair day today. But like, what does Voldemort even need shampoo for? The man has no hair. Or does he? Okay, wait for it. New theory, Voldemort has invisible hair. The real question then is what kind of hairstyle is he rocking under there? Like bangs, afro? Mullet? <laughs> no, actually, no, definitely. It's definitely mullet. B, why does Voldemort become evil? Well, I wouldn't say he becomes evil. In fact, I would argue he was born evil. It all has to do with the circumstances of his birth. Like we all know his mother, Merope Gaunt, used a love potion to force the handsome muggle, Tom Riddle, to conceive a baby with her. Then after she was pregnant, she thought the baby would be enough reason for him to stick around without the potion anymore. But obviously she was dead wrong about that. He was not in love with her, not there for the baby and quickly abandoned both of them. And Dumbledore has this to say about how it affected her. I am guessing again, but I am sure I am right that when her husband abandoned her, Merope stopped using magic. I do not think that she wanted to be a witch any longer. AKA she began repressing her magic while she was pregnant. And if you don't know what happens when the witch or wizard starts doing that, it's exactly what happened to Dumbledore's little sister, Ariana. They form an obscurus, a kind of magical cancer that is almost always fatal. It's what Credence is in Fantastic Beasts. So our theory is that the obscurus became intermingled with, you know, fetus Voldemort and he grows up into a kind of walking, talking, magical cancer conceived out of love, destined for evil. See, why does Voldemort call Peter Wormtail? You know, that is actually a really good point because they must have talked about it at some point, right? Pettigrew, what news do you have for us from the Order of the Phoenix? Uh, actually, my lord, could you call me Wormtail? All my friends do. I am not your friend, Pettigrew, but that that name is pretty cool. You can turn into, I'll meet you halfway. How does Wormbutt sound? 
D, why does Voldemort die from Expelliarmus? Ah, I can see why you might think that as it is the spell Harry fires at him in the final duel after which Voldemort dies, that Expelliarmus kills him, but that that is not what happens. In that duel, Voldemort is using the Elder Wand against Harry, who is at that moment the actual master of the Elder Wand. So when Voldemort tries to use it against Harry, it backfires and Voldemort actually Avada Kedavra's himself. Which is great because it means Harry never actually had to kill anyone, but if you're wondering why that didn't happen in the forest, it's because Harry didn't raise his wand to defend himself. He was trying to die. So if he had fought back in the forest, then the same thing would have happened to Voldemort, but then the Horcrux in Harry and Nagini would have still been active, so Voldemort would have just reverted back to that like mist. E, why does Voldemort eat unicorns? <laughs> I love this phrasing. Like, I love the idea of Voldemort at a restaurant ordering this. Yes, I'll have the unicorn steak as rare as possible. Breathing if you can manage it. And what about you, Wormbutt? Do you want anything? Maybe some cheese? <laughs> no, sorry, that was not the laugh. <laughs> yes, you guys didn't know that's our favorite clip. <laughs> that is our most used clip here, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> Either way, I think this question is actually asking why does he drink unicorn blood, which will keep you alive even if you're an inch away from death at the cost of living a half-life, a cursed life. But who would choose such a life? That's what we're told, but here's the catch. Voldemort already has the Horcruxes at that point, and so already can't die. The reason they're killing the unicorns is to protect Quirrell from dying. During the time when Voldemort is powerless, he would occasionally possess like rats and snakes for a time, but his presence inside of the animal would usually kill them pretty quickly. Quirrell, however, is a wizard and so can handle Voldemort a lot longer, but sure enough, he's still zapping the life out of him. And while Voldemort has no real concern for Quirrell's life or well-being, he does need him to get the stone back so he can get his own body back. F, why does Voldemort fear Dumbledore? Ah, this is indeed a tricky one. Like, is it just because Dumbledore is really powerful and could beat him in a duel? No. Think about it. Voldemort has no reason to fear that. Even if he lost, he has the Horcruxes and would just come back. Plus, the prophecy says only Harry is a threat to him, and yet he continues to fear Dumbledore. Why? It's because every time Voldemort meets Dumbledore, Dumbledore seems to know everything. Like, he knows about him bullying the other kids at the orphanage. He knows Hagrid didn't open the Chamber of Secrets. He knows the name Lord Voldemort before he should. He knows that Voldemort has Death Eaters waiting in the village nearby. Dumbledore just seems to know everything all the time, which is a problem because Dumbledore argues that love is the most powerful kind of magic in the world. Voldemort, of course, thinks that's hilarious. <laughs> there it is again. But in the back of his mind, he knows that Dumbledore does keep being right about everything. And like, what if, what if he's right about this too? Which if he is, he's kind of screwed because as we've already established, Voldemort is incapable of loving. It's that little seed of doubt Dumbledore planted in the back of his mind, basically the moment he met him, that love is more powerful than anything Voldemort will ever do that really makes Voldemort fear Dumbledore. Gee, why does Voldemort go after Harry? Well, this one's actually pretty easy. Professor Trelawney makes a prophecy saying that the one with the power to defeat the Dark Lord will be born at the end of July to parents who have thrice defied him. Snape overhears her making the prophecy and then goes and tells Voldemort at least the first half of it. And it turns out it could be referring to either Harry or Neville, but Voldemort deems it to be meant about Harry because Harry is a half-blood just like him. H, why does Voldemort hate muggles? I mean, mostly because it's good for his platform and like recruiting Death Eaters and stuff. I mean, if your whole thing is just that like pure-blooded wizards are the best things on earth, then it just follows that the less magical blood you have, the more despicable you are. Plus, I guess his muggle father abandoned him and his mother before he was born, so that probably plays into it too. I, why was Voldemort in Albania? Uh, which time? Just kidding, I'll cover both. They're connected. He summers there. Um, but bring me the sunscreen and top off my bite eye. 
why, what cocktail do you think he drinks? So after Voldemort attacks Harry as a baby, he flees to the forest of Albania to hide out for the next like 10 years until Quirrell finds him. But the reason he chooses his location is because someone else chose it first, one Helena Ravenclaw, aka the Grey Lady who hid Ravenclaw's diadem in the same forest and I guess Voldemort just thought it was a private enough place that he could hide out in peace. Also if you're hiding, no one can come help you, but I guess Wormtail or Wormbutt already knows, but and I guess Dumbledore also seems to know, so like, why doesn't he... Jay, why does Voldemort just disintegrate? I love how personal that one was. But it's fairly simple. You see, the Battle of Hogwarts is actually happening at the same time as the Battle of Wakanda, and Voldemort just doesn't survive the snap. Also, also, actually, actually, this whole flaking away thing is just a movie thing, so you know for sure that he's really dead, but like, in the books he just collapses and is a regular old dead body. They moved Voldemort's body and laid it in a chamber off the hall, away from the bodies of Fred, Tonk, Lupin, Colin Creevy, and 50 others who had died fighting him. 50? By the ledger. All right, guys, and now we need to take a brief pause right there to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, MeUndies. Okay, let's be real. Almost all the time, there is nowhere else I'd rather be than just cozied into my couch. But just like sinking into your favorite spot on the couch, MeUndies wraps you in a cocoon of softness. It's like wearing the comfiest cushion around your nether regions, ensuring you feel relaxed and at ease all day long. I mean, I've been saying it for years, I've been wearing them for years. But like, no, actually I have been saying it for years because I've been a subscriber for years. This is literally the only brand of underwear in my underwear drawer at this point because MeUndies are truly the best. And it's not just the softness, it's the prints. Like whether you wake up feeling adventurous, like llamas, anyone, or like low key, they've got me covered, literally. And MeUndies isn't just about underwear. They've got it all. They've got joggers, hoodies, robes, and more. And like, honestly, I don't go like more than two days in my life without wearing joggers. I don't know about you guys, but that's like my favorite article of clothing right now. But also a second ago, I said robes and more. And you might be like, well, sure, more. What do you mean by more? And what I mean by more is dog hoodies. Yeah, the real thing. Check them out, they're glorious. That's definitely a gift they have not seen before. And the best part is, MeUndies has a problem-free philosophy, like not happy with your first pair of undies? It's on them. Guys, good things come in big packages at MeUndies. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com super. That's MeUndies.com super for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Link is in the description down below. Okay, why did Voldemort kill Grindelwald? You know, I guess he really doesn't have to, does he? But as his reason for visiting him is part of his quest for the Elder Wand and he's under the belief that you need to kill its previous owner, then killing Grindelwald is probably just good sense to cover your bases. L, why does Voldemort look like a snake? Indeed, there is a two-part answer for this one. First, just the act of splitting his soul so many times to make his horcruxes transforms his body some. Dumbledore describes it when Voldemort goes in for the job interview. Actually, it's more like Harry describes it, but whatever. They were not as snake-like. The eyes were not yet scarlet, the face not yet mask-like, and yet he was no longer handsome Tom Riddle. It was as though his features had been burned and blurred. They were waxy and oddly distorted, and the whites of his eyes now had a permanently bloody look, though the pupils were not yet the slits that Harry knew they would become. That's when Voldemort is there interviewing for the Defense Against the Dark Arts position, and he's actually there to hide the diadem. So at that point, he's already made as many of his horcruxes as he'll make before attacking Harry. So pre-falling that night, he actually did not look like a snake yet, just like a distorted version of himself, but definitely transformed. Upon his revival in the graveyard though, there is one specific ingredient in the potion that brings him back that ends up making him look more snake-like. The venom of Nagini. This is the snake-like part of the potion that makes his eyes red, gives him slits for eyelids and nostrils, and bear in mind that Nagini herself used to be human, so you can almost see where like her venom was so useful in turning him into a man that looks like a snake. M, why does Voldemort Milk Nagini. <laughs> Is there a less comfortable two words in the whole story? Dolores Umbra. Yeah, it turns out. I need to remind you. Either way, when he says milk Nagini, what he means is harvesting her venom for the potion for his survival. All right, we made it through. And why does Voldemort need to kill Harry? 
You know, the thing is, he does not need to. If he just carried on being evil without paying Harry or the prophecy any mind at all, he totally would have succeeded. In fact, even after that, if he'd just let anyone else kill Harry, they would have succeeded. Wombat, listen up. You're the Potter's secret keeper, right? And you can transform into a rat, right? So here's what I'm thinking. Tomorrow night, you just like sneak in and pow, game over. Although to be fair, I feel like if Wormbutt had been given that task, he could not have done it. I don't think he could have killed James's baby, which is about as much as I can say for Wormbutt. If your only line you're not crossing is killing babies. You'll let someone else do it. Oh, why does Voldemort only use a Bada Kedavra? I mean, usually his goal is to kill people and it is the most effective way to do that, but he does also use other spells. I mean, he has the whole duel with Dumbledore and cast Crucio and Imperio on Harry in the graveyard. He does that whole silver hand thing for a worm butt. He is very, very good at magic and does all sorts of spells, but he's also just like really, really good at killing. It's like his favorite thing. P, why does Voldemort prefer Twitter to Facebook? Come here, closer. Because he only has followers, not friends. <laughs> Q, why was Voldemort on Quirrell's head? Easy one. So after Quirrell fails to steal the Philosopher's Stone from Gringotts, Voldemort is all like, Yo, Terminator, that sucked. From now on, I'm keeping a much closer eye on you. By which I mean two eyes literally on the back of your head. I hope you're a stomach sleeper. He's not, you know, what's Voldemort gonna do about it? Oh, sorry, could you not breathe? Hope you don't die. <laughs> or why did Voldemort run from Dumbledore? I assume this means at the Battle of the Ministry, but like basically Dumbledore had dueled him into a stalemate and Voldemort's final ace up his sleeve of possessing Harry fails miserably. And at that point, the rest of the ministry shows up. He's back. So yeah, at that point, time to, uh, Vamoose. Van Smoot, Lily! Van Smoot! This is a different word, but that's what it makes me think. Van Smoot! S, why does Voldemort steal my shampoo? I'm telling you guys, it's for his invisible hair. Or I guess maybe for Snape, although I guess even with all that shampoo he's stealing, it's like not helping, or maybe Snape's just like not using it. Obviously. Or maybe, maybe it's actually for Lucius to do research for his own line of shampoo, Luscious by Lucius. I mean, that guy knows something about hair. Hey, you think we're funding this Dark Lord campaign, mm -hmm. T, why does Voldemort trust Snape? Not because of his hair care routine, I'll tell you that. No, this is an odd one because like he and Dumbledore kind of share this exact flaw. Like they both believe Snape is lying to the other one and they both must realize that only one of them can be right. But Voldemort's reason for believing in Snape's loyalty is fear while Dumbledore's is love, which ironically is the very reason Voldemort fears him. You, why does Voldemort use Nagini to kill Snape? Listen here, you greased up weasel bat. If I'm stealing all that shampoo for you, I expect you to use it. This is my day of triumph and you look like a baconator, a deep fried stick of butter, worm butt after he's milk Nagini. That jar of gross fat Molly Weasley keeps by the sink. You know how your hands feel after you've held a fish? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty proud of that one. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sweating. The entire North Carolina State Fair. LAX to Dulles. Two hour delay on the tarmac in July. Middle seat. How is it not killing your voice? Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's how you look right now. It's disrespectful. Normally I'd kill you myself, but Nagini likes greasy food, so eat up. I'm still thinking about the fish. <laughs> No, but actually in the moment, Voldemort thinks Snape is the master of the Elder Wand and that if he attacks him with it, the wand will backfire. So he uses Nagini instead. But ironically, that exact thing is what happens to him when he does fight Harry. V, why does Voldemort vape so much? You know, I don't know that he does, but it would not surprise me at all and kind of like even explain like the weird raspy voice. Worm butt, robe me. <sighs> Now, do you have any mint jewel pods or anything? I could really go for a puff. I mean, you just know that just off screen in the graveyard, Voldemort has one of those like tacky vape shops that are like the bright flashing neon lights, right? Voldy's vapes, snake mango, now in stock. I hate those places so much. 
W, why does Voldemort want the prophecy? Right, so the first time he hears it, he only gets the first half, which he thought was enough information to go on to kill Harry, but then like two failed attempts later, he seems to think maybe he needs to know the rest of it to make a more informed murder plot, which actually, if he had gotten it there in year five, I don't think it would have made any difference. But I suppose if he'd heard the whole thing from the beginning, he'd have heard the part about marking Harry as his equal and maybe wouldn't have attacked him at all to begin with. Nothing for X, Y. Why does Harry call Voldemort you know who? Well, for the most part, he doesn't. He really only does it at the very beginning because he's trying to adapt to wizard culture and norms, but abandons it pretty quickly after he's faced him. Although he does resort to this again in Deathly Hallows after Ron has like a surprisingly good instinct about not saying it. Something I don't think we give Ron enough credit for. Like he just instincts out the taboo. Like he notices like an intangible curse go into effect. Z, why does Voldemort zen? Zin? What is, what is Zin? Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. Oh, 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 it's like the vape form of dip? Just like a straight nicotine pouch you put in your lip? Like why, why, why would you, I don't, what is that? Do people do this? I don't know, but I bet he gets some discounts over at Valdi's Vapes. But there you go, guys. That's everything Google wanted to know about Voldemort in 2024. <laughs> These socks are amazing! You guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to ring that bell or subscribe so you don't miss any new future Harry Potter content from us. And in case you didn't know, Ben and I have recently launched a brand new Harry Potter podcast called Through the Gryffindor. It is like the world's greatest Harry Potter book club. Each week we read another chapter in the series and then we just discuss it at length, almost sentence by sentence. So if that sounds like something you would uh, like to listen into, you can check out that video right here or if you want to check out like the original Voldemort Google autofill I wouldn't because it's so old but that's right here otherwise Ben until next time I will see you in another life brother